Okay, Jai Baba. Jai Baba. Jai Baba to all. Now we are reading this book, Mehr Baba's Early Messages to the West, 1932 to 1935. We have completed part one, and now we are reading part two. And those are articles written by various uh, editors, writers, and reporters. Uh, last time we had seen the article written by C.B. Padam, the perfect beautiful article. Then we also read the interview taken by James Douglas and the same interview described by Chanji. So that we have completed last time. Remaining two or three articles, one is very small, that we will read today. And if time permits, we will go for the next um, uh, part three preface. preface. So we are on page number 47. From God is my adventure. By Ram Landau. A few weeks after the publication, of Mr. Douglas' article, I had an interview with Sri Mahababa. It had been arranged by one of his chief British disciples. I arrived on a chilly spring morning at one of those large houses of Lancaster Gate, which might once in opulent Edwardian days have been attractive, but had become gloomy and uncared for since they had been transformed into understaffed lodgings, boarding houses, and residential hotels. I was received by a somewhat forbidden domestic who said that she would call one of them Arabs. She took Baba and party as Arabs. For me, but after a few minutes, a more presentable young woman appeared only to assume, assure me that nothing was known to her about an interview. If, however, I maintain that an interview had been arranged, it was probably so, and she would immediately inquire. A few minutes later, a little Indian with a kind face appeared. He, he wore European clothes and had a black moustache. Oh, yes, Mr. Sri Mehbaba will be delighted to see you. He knows all about you, and it won't be a moment. After he went, I counted for about 20 minutes the number of leaves in the pattern of the wallpaper in the narrow entrance hall. Eventually, however, another lady appeared and asked me to follow her upstairs. So he has described all what happened there nicely. I climbed five flights of stairs and was received on the top landing by another little man with a black moustache. He too had an inviting smile and he said, Please do come in. Mr. Sri Mahababa has been expecting you. He opened the door and I found myself in a small bedroom. The bed had not been yet made. The bed had not been made it, made it and the furniture was simple and typical of the smaller residential hotels in the district. Now we are on page number 48. Shri Mahababa, into bracket whom I shall call for simplicity's sake, Baba, was sitting in the middle of the room in an easy chair. He corresponded in his appearance exactly to the description of Mr. James Douglas. But I waited in vain for the rush of personal fascination and force. I missed the strange thrill when he grasped my hand and though he caressed me, laying his hand 
on my i could not make myself melt away under his enchantment he was wearing a dressing gown bedroom slippers and a woolen scarf around his neck he was holding in his hands the little bag black board with the white letters of the roman alphabet written upon it two indian interpreters were placed behind him and they interpreted to me each of the many quick movements of baba's flickering fingers here a very important thing is to be noted as we read last time that mr james douglas had a beautiful experience he was shocked he was thrilled and all that he the mr ram rome or rome landau had read he was expecting the same thing and baba says never to copy never to expect if we go with the expectation nothing will be found but if we are blank without asking he gives much more same happens with us at samadhi if we get some experience and next time if we wait for the experience or we want to see whether it was real or my imagination then you won't get that experience again so never to copy never to experience expect so he was in the expectation he will get that thrill he will get that shock and all that anyway unfortunately my questions must must have been badly prepared or awkwardly presented for the answer was almost invariably this question requires a more elaborate answer and a longer discussion i shall have to write this answer to you in a day or two after this i had been going on for about 3 quarters of an hour i decided that it would be unfair to trespass any longer on my host time i had been informed that baba was leaving for america in a few days time and i was certain that he had a lot to do before his departure but after i had turned towards the door baba suddenly began making more signs on his board when of his two interpreters stopped me baba says that he is going to help you in the future i was taken by surprise and though i tried to express thanks for this unsought promise i must have does not does so not without embarrassment so as he starts going because he says none of these questions were answered by baba and for your free question baba kept on saying he will send a letter it requires long discussion because his this person had a study of uh, all these philosophical matters he had studied prepared questions and all that and all that but with a disappointment he starts to leave baba helps him out gives another surprise sweet surprise we can say and uh, tells him that he will help him internally it's a big thing actually perhaps he also himself might not have understood the importance underlying importance behind these baba's words and the depth of it now we are on page number 49 a thick letter from baba arrived a week after my interview containing a number of sheets of paper covered with the handwritten answers to my questions the spiritual revival revival that you ask about said the letter is not very far off and i am going to bring it about in the near future utilizing the tremendous amount of misapplied energy possessed by america for the purpose such a spiritual outburst as i visualize usually takes place every 
seven or eight hundred years at the end or beginning of a cycle. And it is only the perfect one who has reached the Christ state of consciousness that can appeal and work so very universally. My work will embrace everything. It will affect and control every phase of life. In the general spiritual push that I shall impart to the world, problems such as politics, economics and sex will all be automatically solved and adjusted. All collective movements and religions hinge around one personality who supplies the motive force. Without this centrifugal force, all movements are bound to fail. Perfect masters impart spirituality by personal contact and influence and the benefit that will accrue to different nations when I bring about the spiritual upheaval will largely depend upon the amount of energy each one possesses. There followed several passages about the possibility of performing miracles and on the last page I found the following sentences. I now take the orders from no one. Baba, it is Baba's reply. <clears throat> It's all my supreme will. Everything is because I will it to be. Nothing is beyond my knowledge. I am in everything. There is no time and space for me. It is I who give them their relative existence. I see the past and the future as clearly and vividly as you see material things about you. So he has narrated. There were many pages. I don't know if the person had understood the importance of getting something from Baba directly, whether he has preserved it or not. So there are many issues Baba has explained and few things are repetition which we will not see and the spiritual of evil, and especially Baba says, nothing is outside the uh, reach and sphere of God because God is everything and everything is in God. So there is no area, no phase of life or sphere where God cannot reach or where God is not connected or related to it. So Baba says that Everything will be automatically solved and adjusted. Everything he will give the spiritual push and world problems, whether it is politics, economics, sex, whatever, it will be solved. It will be adjusted. Baba says, my work will embrace everything. So we can't say that this is not God's issue. This is not spiritual. This God will, whatever whether theater, whether sports, whether literature, whether politics, whether entertainment, whether marketing, economics, everything. Nothing is out of God. Everything is God. Everything is within God. And so Baba says that my, uh, my work will embrace everything. It will affect and control every phase of life. So whatever is happening is by his wish. And with his wish, energy possessed by America for the purpose, it is the reputation everywhere. Baba has said that America possesses a lot of energy, but it is misutilized. And whatever he gives, it is a centrifugal force. He gives equally to each and everyone, to all, whether poor and rich, whether ugly, and beautiful, whether a past person or a bad person or nation, it's equal for all. 
it depends upon the capacity of the receiver, how they receive it. Same for the nation. He will do good for all. It, it depends upon that nation, how much energy that nation has possessed. And accordingly, that nation will get benefited from this autaric period. So, and last Baba says that his supreme will. There are always doubts and questions in the minds of all. So, Baba says whatever happens in the life of an individual is as per his past karma impressions. But Baba also says that everything happens to as per his will. So, what is true? is the question. So both is true. Nothing is wrong. Because whatever happens as per the karma is also a divine will. So that law of karma is also a law of beloved law of God or his will. So that law of karma contains in his will. It is not outside his will. And so his will, everything happens as per his will. I don't know whether I'm able to convey what I want to say. So the law of karma is also a part and parcel of his will. So finally it is his will. And law of karma is not outside his will. So that is also applicable. And Baba's will is also applicable. Both is true. So nothing is beyond my knowledge, Baba says. I am everything. As here, for Indians, it's really easy to accept. For ages, from childhood, we have been listening. Everyone knows that God is in every part and particle of thing and being. Everywhere, in the dust, in the stone, in the beings. He repeats that, oh, hey, Baba, welcome. <laughs> Betty has come. There is no time and space for me. This is another important uh, factor, uh, Baba says. For God, there is no time, no space. Why? Because God is unlimited. When the matter of time and space comes, it brings with it a limitation. If there is time and space with God, God will not be God and it will not be unlimited. Because he is unlimited, it, he is not bound by time and space. That is so beautiful. There is no time and space for me. It is I who give them their relative existence. The very existence of space, time is given by God. Everything is generated from him. Every Baba says in creation and causes, Baba says that every second many universes are created and destroyed every second. So even it is impossible to count how many universes are there for God and Avtaras. Once in Sakuri, Baba and Supasni Mara sat together in the night and they tried to count in and when Baba tried to count Upasni Maharaj stopped him because if you want to count it it has to stop but every second it is being created and destroyed so how you are going to count it by stopping it but if you do that there was a danger of falling Baba's physical body it would have it was a threaten to his physical body so Pasni Maharaj didn't allow him. And this view was seen by Kekoba, not this very scene, but in 1953 in Dehradun. When Baba was in seclusion and uh, somehow Kekoba saw Baba. But how he got the glimpse? In the place of Baba, he saw a brilliant light which is more than even sun's light, light and brilliance and all that glory is less than what he saw. Only flash, nice light, abundant of light. And from that 
light, many universes were being coming out of that light. That scene that glimpse Kekobath saw. And with this glimpse, Kekobath would have dropped his body, would have dead. But Baba was physically present there. And so he was saved from that. So Baba says that relative ex existence of everything is from God. From me, Baba says here. Yeah. I see the past and the future naturally. He sees everything as clearly and vividly as you see material things about you. This was new for the Westerners and Baba explains so nicely for them that. Now we will go to page number 50. I can hardly believe it myself. A beautiful, uh, this thing uh, by Frederick L. Collins. Uh, will anyone like to read uh, Marika, uh, Gangadesa, anyone? Would anyone like to read Betty or shall I read specifically, no? There is something in French. At that time, I'll need uh, some uh, help of some of you. Uh, that is, later on. Hmm. Do you, uh, did you want us to screen share the pages on, from your... I forget, from email? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Meher Krupa and email. Uh, yeah, you, you can keep sharing if not a problem for you. Yeah, there is a hand raise from Rao. Surya Chandra Rao, please go ahead. Yeah, and there is also a hand raise from Marika, Marcia. Mars. Yeah, you asked if you wanted someone else to read. Yeah, yeah. So. No, uh, we are on page number 50. Well, we don't, is it posted though? I don't, I don't, yeah, Betty, don't has to put, Betty has to put it up on the screen. Okay, fine. Uh, Mr. Rao, you have uh, any, anything you want to uh, ask or you want to read? Do you have the book? No. Okay, so I'll continue with it. Uh, you want to ask something, Mr. Rao? Jai Baba? Surya Chandra Rao? No, 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 no. Okay, 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 Jai Baba. So we'll continue. I can hardly believe it. Wonderful, huh? it is lovely. I want you to come to tea. I want you to come to tea, said my friend to Frederick Collins with Sri Sadguru Meher Baba. So her friend, uh, his friend, um, her friend asked, Frederick asked, with what? Tea with Sadhguru. <laughs> so my friend smiled in her most superior manner with the new perfect master from India. She tells, I'm not much on perfect masters myself. And now afterwards we know the journey of Collins. Or on tea, but my friend was insistent. So off we went to visit her globe trotting Parsi. But in the taxi cab, my reluctance grew into a sort of terror. <laughs> <laughs> what language does this friend of yours speak? I asked. He doesn't speak at all, was the reply. He hasn't spoken for seven years. The interview was looking sorer and sorer to me. He was very hesitant. What did you say his name was? I asked in desperation. My companion was very patient. Shri, she said, which means Sir, Sadhguru, which means a perfect master. Meher, which means compassionate. And Baba, which means father. So perfect master, compassionate father, <laughs> he translated. This was a large order. But I must say that Sri Sadguru Meher Baba, in spite of the fact that he had dressed up for tea in an imitation chinchilla coat and light gray flannel pants, looked every inch the part. Not very many inches, to be sure. 
Pa Baba, that's what I decided to call him, was small in the oriental fashion, yet somehow strangely impressive. How in such a getter he managed to be anything but funny was more than I could see. This is important. Certainly, it was not the sartorial or tonsorial effect of Sri Sadhguru Meher Baba as he sat draped over the soft red upholstery of Mrs. Phelps Stokes' best square backed porch that kept me from laughing out loud. It must have been, though I was loath to admit it, the man himself. A stunning yellow-headed, rudy English woman was pouring Baba's tea on her knees by a small taboret in front of the Sadhguru. Baba is not married. At 37, he even flirts tentatively with the doctrine of celibacy as a sort of worldly sedative. <laughs> but his disciples made it clear that he did not prescribe celibacy for his followers. Sex for me, he said, does not exist. Of course, he did not say it, but he communicated it to me by a method I'll explain in a minute. Modern marriage, modern marriage is too much of a business affair, he continued. No wonder it so often results in divorce. Husband and wife should put each other first. It is essential for a happy family life that selfless love should predominate over lust. I ventured to suggest that we who live in America had a good many problems right now besides sex problems. Baba smiled sympathetically, humorously. His smile was like an open fire in a cold house. Things have been messed up a good deal here, he said, by lack of understanding, because he can read the mind. The fact that this Parsi Masiha was discussing our American problems in American language as naturally as if he had lived here all his life didn't seem so strange as you might think. <laughs> there is one after another bombards for this Mr. Collins. He was reluctant to visit Baba. Then he sees Baba in a funny clothes and his coach and all that made him laugh. Now he is telling about the celibacy and not prescribing celibacy. He's telling about marriage, important thing. Marriage is not a business. It's love to give and take, only love. So he is wondering, Mr. Collins is wondering, this Indian Masiha, will he tell us Americans about our problems so confidently as if he has been living here for ages? Because he doesn't know God is everywhere and everything. And the fact that he was discussing them, not with his perfectly good voice, but by means of letters, which he pointed to on a small blackboard which he held on his lap did not seem strange either. He is wondering for everything, 
he is not speaking, he is not telling all these solutions to American problems by voice, but it is on the alphabet, spelled out on alphabet board, someone else is interpreting. So everything was wonder for Mr. Collins. Seven year silences, it seems, are not uncommon events among the holy men of India. <clears throat> The uncommon thing about Baba's was that he made you forget it so soon and so completely. That is important. Baba made him forget that Baba was silent. That is the magic. He could talk in seven different languages on his little boat and could spell out his words in any of the seven faster than human eye could follow. He was articulate in many other ways. This odd little man who had come out of the East to save the world, he talked with his eyes, which I must say are the largest and softest and shiningest and smilingest I ever saw and with jolly little grunts and with affectionate pats of approval and agreement. Then there was his smile. So he's telling all the fascinating things about Baba, his smile, his gesture, his affectionate affection, his wonderful eyes. What are you going to do? I asked for this messed up country of ours. Baba says, it is my country too. He said simply. <laughs> so nice, so affectionate. When Mr. Collins he said, what you are going to do with our country, Baba says, it is my country too. Apparently, he feels that way about every country. He feels that way about every country. And why not? It is his creation. When Gandhi came to him and asked him to help him, Baba replied, Not until you abandon politics. I have no politics. Baba is not an Indian in the sense that Gandhi is. He is a Persian, born in Pune, South India, on February 25, 1895. He was by birth a racial internationalist and by profession a religious one. He tolerated, he said, all cults and all faiths tolerated. Baba tolerated all the cults and faiths. His aim was to make those who professed faith worthy of the faith they professed. It happened that he himself was born. Yeah, Baba was born on 25th February. 1894. Thank you. It happened that he himself was born in the religion of Zoroaster, but he was apparently no proselytizer for any creed or dogma, and that is important. He was born in Pune to Persian parents, but he was for all, because all is his. But at that time, to the Westerner, it was difficult to understand God or Avtar. Baba had not declared. Rather, Baba is telling them in simple manner so that they can know it. And it's not none of their fault because the atmosphere in West is different. And similar, this Persian nationalist, there is one incident. It is uh, given in the book, The Boys, when Baba was to take a, uh, in 1929, Baba was to take a tour to Iran for the first time. And they came to Bombay for the passport and visa. 
the passport was given, but the written passport and visa to India from Iran, they were insisting Baba to sign on the papers. And Baba declined. Baba said, I will not sign the papers. For getting passport to Iran, you have not insisted only my thumb impression was sufficient for you. I will not sign a single paper. Chanji tried to explain to Baba that Baba, this is necessary. But Baba said, Baba stopped him by uh, giving any more explanation. Baba says, more problem, better. And it so happens that after an hour's discussion with the higher officials in the embassy, it so happens uh, uh, Iranian ambassador in Indian embassy came forward and he tells, I know about Meher Baba. I have heard about him a lot. I have read about him a lot. I am ready to help him all the way for getting passport and visa to Iran and to back. I'm ready to give him without signing the papers. See, this is Baba's working. And then he says the only thing is Baba has to uh, declare admit that he is Persian. And for which Baba readily, happily agreed because he says I was born to Persian parents, so to say, in this body, in this age. As avatar. <laughs> so, anyway, to continue our reading, it happened that he himself was born in the religion of Zoroaster, but he was apparently no proselytizer for any creed or dogma. He always made it very clear all religions are equal to him. I intend, very, very important. Next. I intend, I'll just highlight with the person. I intend to bring together all religions and cults like beads on one string and revitalize them. He said, for individual and collective needs, this is my mission to the West. Baba has made it clear what is his mission. And why you want to revitalize? Because Baba himself has told that today none of the religion in this world is in its original form as it was given by those altars and masihas. It has been adulterated by the priests and so-called and over the years, so many years, so none of when why Baba says not to do any ceremonies and rituals, when there is none of the religion is in its original form, what you will follow? What we will follow? Because all the rituals have been adulterated. It's not in its original form. So here Baba says that he want to bring all religions together at like a beads on a string and revitalize them as we see baba is sufism reoriented done by baba so next baba his special now uh, mr colin um, say his special reason for visiting us for the purpose of breaking his seven year silence was he said that America being most deeply engrossed in material things and suffering most in consequence was the soil in which a new spiritual rebirth would first take place. This is very important. New spiritual rebirth will take place in America. So Mr. Collins asked, when you break your silence, I asked, how will you do it? By radio? <laughs> so Baba says, surely not by radio. Exclaimed one of his London disciples, sorry, says Baba's disciples, surely not by radio, explained by one of his London disciples in his most Horrified British man. Why not? 
spelled out Baba on his board. Why not? Skeptic that I was, I could not doubt his sincerity or his courage. When I asked him to particularize about the kinds of messing up to which we in America had been subjected, he might easily have sought a refuge behind one of the general vague assertions of principle with which all Eastern writings are filled. Next, America, Achha. now the pages are available. If anyone wish to read, fine, or I can continue. Anyone wish to? I will I'll write to request Mr. Uh, Gangre, sir. Chitranjan Gangre. Betty reads very nicely. She has a lovely, beautiful voice. Uh, Gangre, sir, can you read? One or two Hello. pages? Ha, Jai Baba. Is the radio Baba. okay? Uh -huh. <laughs> it's not okay. Sorry, sorry. It's not okay. He's in here. Akola. He's a professor, a retired professor. He's in Akola. Uh, Okay, okay, I'll continue, Jai Parma. Um, Marsha has your hand up. You might yeah, please. Marsha, thank you. I always pronounce her wrongly. Yeah? This is oh, good, okay. Marsha. <clears throat> America. America has great energy, he said, but a great deal of it is misdirected. Mm -hmm. and misdirected energy produces destructive complexes, and these in turn produce fear, greed, lust, and anger, which result in moral and spiritual decay. And this is um, part two. Those are strong words, I protested. He smiled reassuringly. He certainly could do wonders with that smile. Is your aim to help us with our spiritual problems or our practical problems, I asked? Our spiritual problems are our practical ones. And just how do you intend to help? The help I will give will produce a change in heart in thousands and then right thinking and living will result automatically. Will that solve the depression problem? It will solve every problem. Mm -hmm. Okay. Prohibition? Yes, and the problem behind prohibition, he said. I do not believe in drink, and none of my followers drink, but I know that prohibition should never have been put in effect the way it was. All at once? Yes. Spirits should have been ba barred, but not beer and wine. Then we might have had a law that could be enforced. As it is, we have a law that makes money for dishonest officials and increases all vices everywhere. You may not agree with this opinion, but at least it is an opinion. I had to admit for all his 70 years silence, seven years silence, Mayor Baba had said more in those few spelled out sentences than many a Senator or party platform maker had mouthed in seven hour speeches. I believe in self-control, he continued, not in coercion. Coercion is based on oppression and results in fear and hatred. Self-control requires courage and may be induced by love. We will do many things for those whom we love, which we would not ordinarily do which we would not ordinarily have the strength of mind and power to do. How many habits have we been able to break through love, which we would never have had the strength to break without love? And when the love is universal love, all habits which are detrimental, either to the individual or to the social order, will be dissolved in its light. And that's 2107 Meher Kupala 54. Yeah, that's uh, the 
I, I didn't want to leave that yeah, out. Before, before you proceed further, okay. we'll okay. just discuss a few important points in this, okay? Sure. Yeah. Well, everywhere Baba says, the solution for all the problem is law. He also, he says, change in heart in thousands and then right thinking. When there is love, there is change in heart, there will be right thinking and that's the solution for all the problems and all the, automatically all the problems will go, Baba says here. And when a very important thing he says that uh, Mr. Collins says, that Baba had said so much in such a small period without using language or, or we can say words or voice that uh, so many speakers could not have been explained for so many years that he has admitted he has made Baba had said more in those few spelled out sentences than many a senator or uh, party platform maker had mouth in seven hour speeches. Similarly, we had seen in James Douglas interview also, such a simple thing, why people don't understand, he had said there also. And then a very, very important thing, which Baba always emphasizes is no coercion. No coercion because only fear will, be, will come out of coercion and only hatred will be there out of caution, and so only love. But that requires courage. It's, an, it's not a game of timid, because you need to have a daring for courage, love. And so Baba says, I am ever ready to give love, but recipient should be ready to receive it. It is not given easily for those who ask for it. But sometimes Sadhguru give, uh, gives it. But sometimes the recipient is hesitant to receive it. And we all know what Baba's love and its effects are. So one has to be ready to be away, to sacrifice all the material things and be totally in his love. And his wish, as he wish, okay, accepted, whatever is his wish. Okay, we will try, how we can love him, he says, at least try to please him. In 1955, Sahwas Baba says, I, I, I say that it is very difficult to love me the way I should be loved. Then at least you try to love me. So how you will try to love me? You start, the first step is start to please me. By pleasing me, so we have to say what he will like. We have to think what he will like. We have to do what he will like. So we have to be alert all the time, every moment on our actions, deeds and thoughts. So we have to do what he will like. So if we try to please him, he may give us that gift of precious love. Here he says all about the universal love. The love is universal love. There is no any area where love is not. As air is everywhere, love is everywhere. Yeah, please continue, Masya. You are reading so lovely. Page number 54. It is the same. Okay, my dog is barking anyway. Uh, <laughs> it is the same way with the economic situation. You were asking me about, he added. There is a very special close connection between a man's character and his circumstances, between his internal environment of thoughts and desires and his external environment. As within, so without is the law. If we are dissatisfied with our environment, it is usually because we do not know how to adjust ourselves properly to the environment. Instead of thinking, how can I get out of this and becoming discouraged and depressed? We should think, what is a lesson I should learn from this experience? Mm -hmm. Poverty, if cheerfully endured, provided one does one's best work, best to find work, develop humility and patience, and can greatly assist spiritual progress. It is a test of character 
I know it is difficult to be cheerful when starving, but all the worthwhile things are difficult. Even millionaires are unhappy unless they have learned to think and live rightly. I asked him if he thought a general acceptance of his doctrine of love would bring about a more equitable distribution of what you and I need every day money. Let me read that again. I asked him if he thought a general acceptance of his doctrine of love would bring about a more equitable distribution of what you and I need everyday money. It must, he replied, suppose we all loved each other as deeply as we now love the one whom we love best. The most natural desire of love is to share what one has with the beloved. The desire to share with everyone will produce a condition under which it will be a disgrace rather than an honor for anyone to possess more than anyone else. Sex, mm -hmm. prohibition, poverty, all were to be banished by love. Do you expect to do this all at once, I asked? No, but sooner than you think, people will respond. Why? They will have to. Do you do you want to stop and do us some bullets or something? <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah. It's so lovely. So nicely. He main point here, Baba emphasizes, if there is a love, automatically you will feel for other. And there will be a feeling of sharing. So you will not hold it. In India, at least, it's very common that uh, none of the family member will think about the self. But always that member will think about the other member and he will, whatever he has money, food, whatever he will try to give to the other member whom he loves in the family. So the same thing Baba is telling here, if we love each other for all, so we will have that spontaneous feeling of sharing. And uh, that is very wonderful. Uh, that uh, reminds me a story in our childhood, Mani Mai had told us, if it's okay, I'll just uh, tell uh, in short time. She used to tell us it so happened. We were children that time, uh, school, school going children. So she said, come, I'll tell you a story. Uh, so she said there was one day a big party between the um, gods. All the in India, they call deities, no devtas. So different, different gods. And they uh, announced a party, a big Mm, nice uh, food meal for all and all the nice uh, she only my she describes very nicely a nice uh, water mouthing uh, dishes she is describing gulab jamun this and that indian dishes and uh, but the they fix all the long table and uh, there that party is for gods as well as for demons hmm? we call in rakshas so they uh, gods and demons. So one side of the table are the demons, one side are God. All the food is placed in between, decorated nicely. But the condition is they are the everyone's hand, whether demon or God. If you, if you can see me, everyone's hand was tied. A big, long, strong wooden stick was tied to the fix to the both hands of every god and every demon and to eat we have to fold hand like this we have to fold hand then we can take a morsel whether by hand or by spoon but if the stick is fixed here and bound here how can you fold hand and you can eat you cannot eat, right? So then she explains, you will have to look at me now because this is a story of only seeing. So when the something is tied to your hand, you cannot fold it. So gods do the idea. What they do, they stand in front of each other and they feed each other. Like this, every god is feeding other God. 
and in this way god enjoy the food very nicely whereas demons are selfish and wanted food all to consume themselves and they try and try and nothing is coming out and they remain hungry so <laughs> sharing out of love this is the remedy done there the god uh, feed each other with the uh, that hand which is straight bound by the stick this uh, story manimai had told and i immediately recollected it here that out of love we can share and if we share the problems will get solved automatically please continue mashia yeah okay. must... uh, he did not explain all right let me see where we're at the most natural desire of love is to share what one has with the beloved the dire desire to share with everyone would produce a condition under which it would be a disgrace rather than an honor for anyone to possess more than anyone else sex prohibition poverty all were to be banished by love do you expect to do this all at once i asked no but sooner than you think people will respond why they will have to he did not explain but he didn't need to i knew that he would say that the compelling force would be love what are you going to do first i asked 21 seven as uh, it's okay go to okay. china yeah great okay. thank you okay i'm trying to okay Uh, my dog might bark occasionally. <laughs> She's, okay, shall I take over? Yeah, okay. or if you want, right. if you don't yeah, mind, we'll do bark occasionally. It's up to uh, you. Yeah, we'll complete this. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Masha. It's lovely. You're you have voice. Page number fifty-five. So he asks Baba, "What are Baba's plans?" So Baba simply says him, "Go to China, but I shall come right back. I am only staying there a day." I knew he had recently come sixteen thousand miles from his native India by way of Port Said, Marseilles, South Map, Southampton, and Greenwich Village, and now he was planning to go to China just for a day. To China by way of Hollywood and Honolulu, I want to lay a complete cable, he said, between the east and the west. This is important. I did not laugh. Colin say I did not laugh. I might have half an hour before, before seeing Baba, before uh, communicating with Baba, before spending some time with Baba. He might have laughed at this. But now, after spending just few minutes with Baba and hearing his answers and his eyes and the way and Baba's presence made him think, believe all these things. So he says I did not laugh. I might have half an hour before. i'm sure i would have three years before when the gospel of acquisitiveness was saving or enslaving the world but now god knows we need a cable layer we need a cable layer a sadguru perfect master someone to lead us out of the slow of materialistic despond and if he comes in the guise of a most child parsi in an imitation fur pyjama jacket and grey flannel pants who cares and after all why shouldn't he in his ashram in india an ashram is a sort of retreat baba is treated almost as a god listen to the words of a disciple the devotion inspired by shri mahababa has to be seen to be believed particularly everyone in the ashram would have laid down his life for the master a glance or a touch from him was more esteemed than a handful of jewels even at a slight reproof mean have been known to solve for days so this is explanation of baba is told to colins oh that's all right for india you say but this well 
here he was, this perfect master, in his doubtful chinchilla jacket on Mrs. Hill's stroke square backed sofa. This is all he's troubling him. And here was I, the unbeliever, sitting joyously beside him, who was reluctant to see Baba. Now he is joyous in Baba's company. See the transformation. He just looked at me and smiled. I think I smiled too. We sat that way a long time. I know you will laugh, but we did. Baba believes in meditation. And when you are with him, you believe as Baba does. I can hardly believe it now, but I distinctly remember I was having a good time. He was reluctant. Now he is just sitting with Baba in silence. And Baba says his company, just observing him and letting him observe us, teaches so much and unlearns so much. Everybody does have a good time with Baba, for he is that rare being, a happy man. The police conclude his article here in this way. I know the time is up, but if there is five, ten minutes, we'll just finish this chapter, uh, part three or two, with one single page remaining on page number 56. Is it okay? Is there any meeting? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. So, um, yeah. Uh, from the man of law. And this is from Christmas Humphreys, page number 56. Yeah. It must be 10 years ago since I was taken to a room in London to visit Meher Baba and the recent receipt of literature about his life and work and a copy of Mr. C.B. Perdam's book, The Perfect Master, it's there, has reminded me of one of the three most remarkable men I have ever met. I sat beside him cross-legged on a sofa while we talked by means of an alphabet boot, for he had taken a vow of silence, of love, and the use of love, and, if I remember rightly, of the doctrine of transmitted merit, whereby it is said, the Bodhisattva hands over for the benefit of all mankind, the karmic benefit of all his noble deeds. For the first time in my life, and I have not met another like him, I found myself in the aura of a man who literally radiated love. Like all great mystics, he combined the profundity of mystical experience with the guileless candor of a child, and his smile was as infectious as the words he used were immaterial. Only Baba's love was sufficient to have a dialogue. Words were not required. So very lovely, he has explained. For I found, as I found with the Abbotai Suite, Husu and Nicholas Rurik, I'm sorry for the odd pronunciations of this name, that after a while there is no need of words and one can speak from mind to mind in silence. And all the while he radiated such a pure affection that one wondered why when all religions praise the value of pure love, it should be a memorable experience to meet one man who practiced it. 
so beautiful. He has written about Baba. The cause of war is hatred. Born of desire, born of ignorance, and hatred ceases not by hatred. Hatred ceases but by love. If there were more Meher Babas in the world today, war would end for want of causes. So nice. This man of love sets all men an example. Let's of who invoke the name of the all-compassionate one at least make further attempts to follow it, to follow love. So very important, so nice, so beautiful. There's few lines by Christmas Humphreys. He again part two. After this starts part three. And part three comprises of questions and answers. And uh, there is also a small booklet. It was published by Puna Center. Uh, questions, Mer Baba answered. There are 72 questions. There are 63 questions. And, sorry. And we'll know all about this maybe in our next session. And uh, if you want to continue or if you want to wind up because as it is by Baba's grace, we have completed part two. So part three, we can start uh, next time, next session. But before that, I will like to take an opinion. Whatever is given like this, no? So you will like us to read it. Jai Baba. What is Jai it Baba. that you're showing? Sorry? What was that that you were showing? You held right. up a book. Yeah, these are, um, this is the original booklet question and answers um, yeah. picture. That is okay. For this, we can just uh, read or skip is okay. Uh, this one. Uh, this is the letter written by Baba. It's this one uh, here. Mm -hmm. uh, you, uh, Betty can also show it is sent to her by email. This is Baba's letter, Baba's signature. And here, Baba expresses his wish to uh, publish uh, these question answers in a booklet form. And also his wish is to translate it to as many languages as possible. And this letter is all about it. And likewise, uh, then that uh, there is a part three introduction and preface to part three and there is a um, all you know, contents of part three and then the start there starts question and answer uh, but uh, the part of part two is like this uh -huh. Then. Uh -huh. and what is it whatever was published in the newspapers or magazines during Baba's visit. This is a part of part two. There are 30 pages. Like this, if you see, see. Oh my. There, there are 30 pages like this. And uh, it is, at least for me, it's very difficult. Uh, <laughs> I have a weak uh, ear and a weak eyesight too. <laughs> so... I have a, a, a WhatsApp group in that I have posted all these pages. I have scanned them. Oh. Yeah. And if it is a scan copy, uh, we can expand and read it. Uh, someday I will sit and try to read it. But these are all the papers. And it's definitely valuable treasure. What was written about Baba that time. Some is favorable, something is unfavorable as well. So they have given whatever was um, in your Sunday Mirror, Liberty magazine. See, all these many pages, 30 pages are like this. Baba's photos. Now. Yeah, it is. Huh. Yeah, Kripa, are you asking if it's our preference to see those pages like that? I can show you what how it looks yeah um and are you asking do we do we pref do we want to see these like this is that is that your question 
Yeah, my question is, uh, now we should uh, start, uh, like our next session, we should start part three question answer, or we should first try to read all these 30 pages of the publications uh, at that time appeared. This I have not seen you. Yeah, yeah. It's very ah. difficult to read. As, uh, because this one, which I am showing, this I have not sent you. I'll send you, uh, Betty. These okay. 30 pages I'll definitely send you uh, by email. Ah. But these are ah. so small print appeared in the newspapers ah. and uh, magazines. But everyone must have a look at, at it. So what we will do, we can at the most do the screen presentation. Right? And uh, we will try if we can read any of these. Whatever we are able to read, we'll read it or we'll skip it. Please kindly suggest me. Hmm. Any of you or everyone of you, what are your opinions? I would, so, I would su suggest maybe we go to the questions and answers and then come back to this. Or ah, uh, That's a good suggestion. Oh, or, fine, fine. or read questions and answers and then just maybe read one letter in each session so we don't have to do everything yeah that is also good yeah it's any other awesome. suggestion yeah right <laughs> i like both suggestions <laughs> yeah, yes betty what you will say i was just saying that's a lot of scanning for you to do Merkrupa, a lot <laughs> uh, no don't worry i have already done it i'll say oh you you've me. done it oh my goodness okay <laughs> wow uh -huh. Because you can share to as many as you want. What I have done here, I have formed a WhatsApp group. Anyone of you who have WhatsApp can join that group and enjoy all this. But already now we are on page number 50 or so in that group. And in that group, I have posted all these 30 pages. Already posted. Uh, so here, uh, I think uh, this is a good uh, suggestion that will start part three, question answer, and every session will um, preserve half an hour and go on reading each page. So it will be a less strain, yes. <laughs> that sounds good. That's a good idea, Diana. Yeah. yeah. Good. Most of us has... have WhatsApp. You know, most What's of us have the... WhatsApp. We have... we have that. That's what you just said, WhatsApp. Yeah. There is you know, somebody thing. told me about something called Dropbox. It's free and you can put more files in it. You know, it's just something I just heard about. Dropbox. Mm -hmm. We yeah, have there is one handrails. Galaxy 8 and who's that? I don't there is one handrails. Hmm. Oh. Not now. No, no. Is it Mahushehariari? I think we yes do, yes, yes that's um, Mahu Shari. How are you? <laughs> Jai Baba. Jai Baba. Jai Baba. Let me bring my video on. Good good. Happy to see you here. <laughs> yeah, same here. I'm sorry I'm late, but I wanted to see you. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. So we will do question answers, and then we'll do one page each time. Uh, that sounds yeah. good. Yeah. That good. If there's more time, maybe you can show another page. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that sounds <laughs> good. Wow, thank you. This is a wonderful book. Uh, thank you for sharing. <laughs> thank you, Baba. He has suggested this book. Some may not believe, but <laughs> it is his suggestion, yeah. So many pictures and newspapers and so many different uh, media, I guess is what it is. Wow. <laughs> so uh, shall we uh, stop or we should uh, start reading third uh, part also? Or shall we stop here today? I think that's enough for today. And then we can start yeah. that whole new section next time new section new day right right thank you uh, second uh, friday and um, yeah. is are there any questions any shares uh, i just time. wanted to suggest if we can finish with a prayer baba's prayer 
Uh, yeah, definitely. We always conclude the session with Baba's prayer and mm -hmm. Aarti. And mm -hmm. as you have suggested, Mahu, we will like you to say prayers. And Mr. Rao, will you sing Aarti, Jai Baba, Surya Chandra Rao? Jai Baba? Um, uh, yeah, who is there? And someone else Jai will Baba. sing. Huh. Will you sing Aarti after Mahu says prayers? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. So let her finish first prayers. Then you will mm. sing Aarti. Before that, anything else? No, no question. <laughs> Mm, Just I am thank reading. you, Baba. Very good reading. Thank you. Thank Baba. you, all of you. Thank so you. nice of you. So nice to meet. Avtar, Meher Baba, ki jai. Yes, go kindly start prayers. Jai Baba. Should I do their beloved God prayer or other prayers? What would you suggest? Hmm. <clears throat> okay, I do master prayers. <clears throat> o Pavardegor, the preserver and protector of all, you are without beginning and without end, non-dual, beyond comparison, and none can measure you. You are without color, without expression, without form, and without attributes. You are unlimited and unfathomable, beyond imagination and conception, eternal and imperishable. You are indivisible, and none can see you but with eyes divine. You always were, you always are, and you always will be. You are everywhere, you are in everything. And you are also beyond everywhere and beyond everything. You are in the firmament and in the depths. You are manifest and unmanifest on all things and beyond all things. You are in the three worlds and also beyond the three worlds. You are imperceptible and independent. You are the creator, the Lord of Lords, the knower of all minds and hearts. You are omnipotent and omnipresent. You are knowledge infinite, power infinite, and bless infinite. You are the ocean of knowledge, all knowing, infinitely knowing, the knower of the past, the present, and the future. And you are knowledge itself. You are all merciful and eternally benevolent. You are the soul of souls, the one with infinite attributes. You are the trinity of truth, knowledge, and bless. You are the source of truth, the ocean of love. You are the ancient one, the highest of the high. You are Parabhu and Parameshwar. You are the beyond God and the beyond, beyond God also. You are Parabrahma, Allah. Elohi, Yazdan, Ahura Mazda, and God the Beloved. You are named Izad, the only one worthy of worship. Avatar Meher Baba Ki Jai. And why don't you continue repentance prayer and small prayer and then he will sing Aati. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, we repent, O oh God, most merciful, for all our sins, for every thought that was false or unjust or unclean, for every word spoken, 
that ought not to have been spoken. For every deed done that ought not to have been done. We repent for every deed and word and thought inspired by selfishness. And for every deed and word and thought inspired by hatred. We repent most especially for every lossful thought and every lossful action, for every lie, for all hypocrisy, for every promise given but not fulfilled, and for all slander and backbiting. Most especially also, we repent for every action that has brought ruin to others, for every word and deed that has given others pain, for every wish that pain should befall others. In your unbounded mercy, we ask you to forgive us, O oh God, for all these sins committed by us, and to forgive us for our constant failures to think and speak and act according to your will. Amen. Um, beloved God, help us all to love you more and more and more and more and still yet more till we become worthy of union with you. And help us all to hold fast to Baba's Dhamma till the very end. Avatar Meher Baba Ki Jai. Avatar Meher Baba Ki Jai. Avatar Meher Baba Ki Jai. Thank you. So nice. And, uh, Mr. Ram. Uh, Mr. Surya Chandra Rao, Jai Baba, you will sing Aarti. Sushma Tiku. Sushma Ji. Maybe he needs to open his speaker. Yeah. Sometimes we forget. <laughs> uh, she will sing. Jai Baba. 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 Jai Jan is a city, 
अवतार मेहर बाबा की जय थैंक यू ऑल जय बाबा अच्छा महू यू नो ईरानी लैंग्वेज फारसी या अरेबियन लैंग्वेज यस पर्शियन सो आई नो इट कैन यू प्लीज हेल्प मी या इफ आई कैन हेल्प यू या बिकॉज Uh, do you have those uh, ghazals written by baba in the name of meherban the there all it is in arabic or farsi language so i will i can send you uh, do you know hindi script devanagari script uh, i know a little bit of sanskrit but not hindi no mm, so how we go about it i need someone who can translate them either in hindi or english because i don't know the words i don't get the proper dictionary if i google also i i can translate it to english also my husband is a very good translator but then how so, because originally you have the it is in the diary of khurshid which is written in gujarati oh is in gujarati from, from mm. gujarati i can make it in hindi i'm doing it aha uh -huh. but then uh, from hindi if i write it in english it will the it will totally change meaning will yeah. totally change so yeah. we need someone who can do from this hindi to english or means the script is hindi but words are farsi arabic so it has to be then uh, explained in hindi or in english or in both the languages If it is Arabic, uh, I'm okay. But if it is Sanskrit Arabic, I don't know a lot of uh, Sanskrit. But what I can... you can do, what you mm -hmm. can do, you use some dictionary, some app there. Uh, you copy uh, either lines or some yeah. other. Yeah. You whatever I'll send you, you can copy. Yeah. You can try to. Uh, translate first in in Arabic or whichever uh, script you are known to, and then you can see if it can be done. Uh, 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 translate I, to English. Yeah, I I um, probably like to translate it to Farsi, and then from Farsi to English. Yeah, yeah. So I I can say I can put my email address in the chat. Please can okay oh. kindly kindly put it. I'll yeah. Write. and then uh, if you like you can email me and i will look yeah, at please, it please please yeah sure and then your email address is there so we can communicate so let me yeah. write it's very easy it's mahubaba at gmail.com mahubaba at gmail.com um shall i write yeah you can write i mean okay. uh, Uh, we have to write in chat better if you write in chat it will be better uh, yeah yeah you have written yes